<laughs> Hello, post office. This is Happy Viking, and I'm supposed to receive a package today, and I would like to know where it is. Tracking number? My tracking number is six. Six six. But that shouldn't matter. It's a very unique looking package. Yes, it's a 16th century Danish trunk. Yes, that's right. Do you have it there? Oh, you sent it out already. Uh, how long ago? Oh, an hour! Oh, mercy me, it should be here any minute. Sick shit. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Should be here any minute. So, what heavy metal vikingly duty should I tend to in the meantime? Fucking blue shells. Viking, we need to talk. Hey, Diamanda Hagen, how are you? What brings your pretty face to my neck of the woods? Please look at me while I'm talking to you. Sorry, man, I can't. I'm busy with urgent matters. I wish to talk about metal. Oh, well, urgent matters suck, anyhow. So, you're a metalhead, then? Yes. A bigger one than you. And I watch your show sometimes. Oh, thank you. And I hate it. Oh. Yes, it's very not good. Now, I love these silly little internet review shows, but yours is insufferable. And so are you. And as a metalhead, I feel like I'm not being represented. Well, why don't you like me or my show? Oh, lots of different reasons. For instance, your camera sucks, your lighting sucks, you suck, your hair sucks, you're a twat, you fuck goats, you hate black metal, you love Christian metal, you twice said I looked like a man. I don't hate black metal. Bullshit! You've been harping on about black metal stereotypes here since the fucking White Wizard review. Admit it! You hate black metal! I don't hate black metal. Some of my best friends are black metalers. Yeah, right. Why don't you prove it? Review a black metal band for once. Specifically, one that I like. Oh, I see. Yeah, I could do that, but what if I simply refuse? What if I have better things to do than review the favorite band of a broad-shouldered, tyrannous clown? You have a package coming in, right? Yeah? Should be there in about three seconds. What are you talking- I figured you'd be the stubborn type. So I sent a minion over there to enforce my will. Conveniently, he also works at Canada Post. You magnificent bitch. Ah, yes, minion. Please smack Hammy Viking for calling me a broad-shouldered, tyrannous clown. <coughs> also, smack him for not pausing Mario Kart the second I greeted him. <coughs> It's common courtesy, Viking. You really should know this! Okay, shall we do this? You'll be joining me for this? Talking about an awesome metal band and smacking you upside the head by proxy? Oh fuck yeah, I'm getting in on this! Alright then. So what band are we reviewing today, mistress? I'm glad you asked. Today's band is the revered, the glorious, the mystifying, the brilliant... Balsagoth! Ah, Balsagoth. A shining gem and a sea of shit. There are hundreds of bands that sound like Judas Priest and a hundred bands that sound like Iron Maiden, but there's only one band that sounds like Balsagoth. And that's Balsagoth. They're a black symphonic metal outfit that formed in Yorkshire and they've been around since 1993. Almost 20 years. And they spent the last 20 years destroying absolutely everything in an avalanche of epic, bombastic rock. They strictly niche appeal and it mainly has to do with their choice of theme. You know how Cradle of Filth are obsessed with Anne Rice? Well, Balsagoth are obsessed with Conan the Barbarian. Well, who wouldn't be obsessed with a big, muscly barbarian with taut abs and majestic pectorals? But seriously, Bal Sagoth loves schlocky low fantasy, and they're not at all shy about it. In fact, the name Bal Sagoth comes from the title of a short story by Robert E. Howard, who created Conan. 
These guys love pulp fantasy so much that they sacrifice nubile Amazonian virgins to it, ritual volcano style. All of their songs are about this sort of thing. You don't really need lyric sheets to understand where they're coming from, just listen to some of this stuff. Wow. Anyone else just feel the urge to crush their enemies, see them driven before them, and hear the lamentations of their women? I did too, actually. Dude, we have so much in common. We should do lunch. Minion! This story of Valsagoth is really the story of one man, a man named Byron A. Roberts, pictured here in his normal, everyday casual wear. Back in 1989, the year where metal was either punky and political or drop-dead fabulous, Lord Byron wanted to do something different. He wanted to make symphonic black metal about barbarian armies and demonic temples. Most people's reaction to his idea was something like this. Oh, he's a madman! A madman! But being the hardcore metal maverick that he was, Byron got together a bunch of sweet bros and made his first footsteps towards the high throne of metaldom. And by sweet bros, I mean the modeling bros, Johnny and Chris, keyboards and guitar, respectively. These three, along with some other chaps, would later form Balsagoth in 93 and rock their way into the ranks of Cacophonous Records, releasing their first three albums with them. Cacophonous Records was so cheap when producing Balsagoth's second album that they refused to shell out for new tape reels. The band had to record over their own first album. What the fuck? But then, after album number three, Balsagoth moved up to the big leagues. They ditched the Zero and got with the Hero, the always amazing Nuclear Blast, and released another three albums. Six sacred, symphonious sagas of war, warship, might, metal, and magic. And that's magic with a K, noobs, because these guys are epic like that. Now, gentle viewers, I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, there's a million and one fantasy metal bands out there. Balsa Goth can't be anything special. Well, fuck you, you're wrong! Most bands that play this sort of music either make up generic shit or rehash tales from the Silmarillion. Balsa Goth tops all these guys by making up their own fucking world! Oh yes, this is where Balsagoth gets its supreme power from, its setting and its storytelling. Lord Byron built a large, comprehensive, huge fucking universe where all of his songs take place, taking elements from Howard, Lovecraft, Lucas, Tolkien, Burroughs, and pretty much everyone ever, he constructed a solid and expansive fantasy frontier with an infinite supply of tales and stories, and these stories are as awesome as they are numerous. You have warring empires fighting each other on lost continents, you have a rogue demigod traveling to the moons of Jupiter to collect fragments of an arcane artifact. My god, this is the greatest D&D campaign ever! I stabbed the evil demigod Zura right in the face with the shadow sword of the Hyperborean King. I roll a 16. What? Are you expecting me to DM? Yeah, kinda. It's in your name, right? DM Monda Hagen? That's a terrible pun. And I fucking hate you. Oh, come on. Just tell me what happens to me. You die instantly and your corpse is molested by a million goat devils. Ah, shucks. Also, you get smacked. Despite how childishly the Viking brings it up, comparing Balsagoth to a session of Dungeons and Dragons isn't necessarily inaccurate. Just like its 1930s era literary forebears, Balsagoth's songs are fanciful, overwrought, and extremely silly. I mean, when you have songs with titles like The Dark Liege of Chaos is unleashed at the ensorcial shrine of Azur Kai, the splendor of a thousand swords gleaming beneath the blazon of the Hyperborean Empire, Part 2, it's impossible to be anything but extremely silly. And yes, that's the full name of the song. A lot of their songs are like that. Overcompensating much? But regardless, they take their setting and their storytelling seriously. So seriously, in fact, that to better tell their stories, half of their songs are in spoken word. Of my 
wonder if the rapturous scent of black lotus. Assemble the legions, forward the iron phalanx. Our victory here is assured. It's all about the narrative, man. Balsagoth is all about telling a compelling story. That's why half of their songs have such long-winded titles. They're essentially describing what happens in this part of the story. They're more like chapter titles, and every album they've put out is just another arc in a grander narrative, and they all tie in together. In a way, the story in the world is the whole point. And Byron A. Roberts is extremely passionate about it. As if I needed any more proof for my theorem, which, as I remind you, is that all metalheads are giant nerds. And Mr. Roberts... He's definitely a giant nerd. In a good way, of course. Aside from being an aficionado of pulp fantasy and science fiction, he's also a gamer and a comics enthusiast. In fact, one song on the Power Cosmic is actually about the Silver Surfer. This is the crown jewel of outrageous nerdosity. Plus, he has interviews that read like this. The lyrics are the mana which sustains this mammoth cosmic engine. They are the coruscating crystals of power which energize the Balsagoth war machine. Well, I figure if I had an honors degree in English and I wrote my final thesis on how much H.P. Lovecraft rocks, then I'd probably write like that too. Uh, I can't help but notice that he speaks just like me. No, Byron Roberts speaks like Byron Roberts. You speak like the old Spice guy if he was played by Steve Urkel. Harsh, yet oddly spot on. Touché. They haven't released an album since 2006 when they released the Chthonic Chronicles. Byron Roberts says that with Chronicles, the hexology is complete, that the first stage of Balsagoth is over. Unfortunately, he hasn't said very much about the second stage, for the band at least. Byron himself is currently working on bringing his multiverse to other media. He's writing a glossary and a couple of comic books and hosts a handful of sketches from them on his website. Hot damn! Hey, when those comics come out, you think we should all do a crossover with Linkara? Fuck no! This crossover's already shit! We have all three of us there, then it's just gonna turn into a extinction level event of shitness. Oh, criminy. Maybe that's how 2012 will go down. That wouldn't surprise me. The three of us do a Christmas special together and upload it on the 21st of December 2012. The entire of society collapses. Society collapses, brother turns on brother, and in the end we die in fire. My god, that sounds like fun, actually. Anyway, now, this is the part of my show where I throw down my criticism, so, just in case, Mistress Hagen, may I respectfully take the piss out of one of your favorite bands? Yeah, go for it. Cool. Minion. What was that for? Don't lie to me. You were just about to earn that. Yeah. See? You're starting to understand how my brain works. You're taking your first steps on the way to friendship and understanding. You don't really get patterns, do you? Apparently, quite a few people seem alienated by Balsagoth's gradual softening of their music, especially since they started with a very black metal sound, as heard in A Black Moon Broods Over Lemuria. And have since put more emphasis on Symphonia, likely because it works better with their storytelling. But then, some people don't like their storytelling either, and they think the instrumentals and the spoken word parts kill the momentum. Can't please everyone, I guess. This is why Balsagoth is such a niche band. They're storytelling. They focus all of their energy on this world of theirs. The music serves mainly to enhance the stories rather than the other way around. And this focus will not be to everyone's liking, and it makes them something of a love it or hate it dealy. You can't really be on the fence about Balsagoth. It's like or dislike, heaven or hell, try or die, brave or grave, chicks or dicks, your call. Despite having been around for almost 20 years, Balsagoth never got round to making a music video, largely because the money needed to make a proper Balsagoth video would bankrupt several small countries. And since Balsagoth is way too epic to be contained by a single music video, we're gonna use footage from 70s and 80s cheesy movies. Sweet shit! Kick the jams!
good for you too? Shut the fuck up, Viking. You're ruining the moment. Okay, okay. Shall we wrap this up? Yes, let's. Sweet, merciful me, let's end this on a high note. Every song of Balsagoth is like the metalist soundtrack to the most epic movie never made. They know they're over the top, they know they're fucking insane, and they know that they rock. They're my favorite band, and it's been six years too long since their last album. I heartily agree. Balsagoth is one of a kind. Gimmicky fantasy metal is dime a dozen, but Balsagoth stands above all those cheap wannabes, like Conan atop a mountain of skulls, taking all of the best and most badass parts of fantasy and science fiction and mashing them together, they have created a uniquely memorable landscape. But then they add in epic bombast, sublime atmospherics, and strong, captivating language, and all of a sudden their whole world lives and breathes. Whether or not they will make a seventh album remains to be seen, but no matter what the fate of the band, Byron Roberts will continue developing, exploring, and sharing his one-of-a-kind world with all of us, for which we are very thankful. I'm Demanda Hagen, and I have to live with that every day. As do we all. Which is why I'm so thankful I'm so easy to get along with. Viking, you're nothing but an easy-going little piece of cactus-shaped bit of something unpleasant. I'm Canadian. If I ever see your ratty little cro on face again, I'm gonna rip out your lungs and replace them with vinegar! Ah, uh, you're a peach. Looking forward to it. Come in. She's funny. Oh, and gamma rays suck! <gasps> Dude! Not cool! Fuck you! Well, that came out of fucking nowhere. Well, I guess you're dismissed, huh? Best head back home, little buddy. Stop. Feeling pretty humble right now. Anyway, I'm Happy Viking, and you've just been served your recommended dosage of heavy metal. And on behalf of myself and Diamanda Hagen, we wish you good day. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to go get drunk and go on a spirit quest. Later. <laughs>